Okay, coffee time. And... Morning meditation. 177 sessions. 30 hours meditated. Got my morning coffee. Typically Vietnamese people just drink what's in that little metal bit on the top. So it's quite small, but I normally just top it up with a bit of extra hot water and a bit of milk. And it's called Cafe Den. My roommate's actually gone back to the US for a month, so I've got the whole place to myself. I've got a lot to do today, so I'm gonna get a little bit of work done and then head out to film some teaching tips for you guys. Time for some lunch. We're having some buncha. Yeah, I'm ready. This is my second uh, brand of buncha, so we'll see how it compares. Meatballs, noodles. Uh, that's kind of like pickled stuff, right? Pickled. Is it cucumber? No. Carrots. Carrots and, and some kind of radish or something, but it's yeah, it's sweet. It's a uh, sweet radish. And you get all the like, green stuff. So that meal was sixty thousand dong, which is about. Three dollars, so it's about a dollar and a half each for that. Not too bad. So we're here now at the Romano Hotel pool. We thought we'd just come out here as a nice spot to film a little bit and hit you up with some teaching tips because. We know that everyone wants to know about the lifestyle of teaching English out here, but also, of course, you're going to be teaching and a lot of people want to know how to go about doing that. Obviously, good training and certification is important, but getting some tips won't hurt, so let's crack into some of those. Okay, the first tip and possibly the most important one for new teachers as well as experienced teachers, I think a lot of people can fall into the trap of this, is talking too much and this is referred to as teacher talk time and I remember when I first started teaching I almost thought of teaching as a lecture a performance that you have to do in front of people you got to get your point across you got to talk a lot and that is actually not what teaching English is all about so TEFL teaching English as a foreign language the main purpose of a lesson uh, I mean, this is, there's lots of different things, of course, but you do want to shift the focus onto the students talking because they're learning a language. It's not like a university lecture where you are giving them information. It's getting them to talk. So you speak as much as needed, but you want to reduce your teacher talk time so that the students can talk more and practice the English more. So ways you can do this is simply by keeping what you say to a minimum and getting students to talk more and engage more and repeat after you and putting that uh, focus on them to talk more. The next tip is to be enthusiastic. Now I think this is huge when teaching English because a lot of the classes you're going to be teaching are younger kids and I would say in Vietnam for example 90% of the jobs are with younger students not adults and you have to keep their attention, you have to keep them engaged. So if you don't do that, you can't get your message across, you can't keep them interested, and that's gonna reflect in how much they learn and how much they get out of the lesson. So if you find that you're a little bit quieter, if you're a little bit less energetic and enthusiastic, just work on that a little bit. I mean, you don't have to be a dancing monkey. Uh, you can just spend a little bit more time on speaking clearly, speaking with some tone in your voice and this is also really big when you're nailing a demo class because schools are honestly probably looking at this a lot more than the other factors because they want their students to be engaged, so that the parents are happy and if you don't come across as that type that can actually do that then it's going to be a lot harder to land a job. My foot's just like burning in you're wearing a black shirt too, man. Yeah. So when I teach, I think of each time I have a lesson, I try to give it my all and like leave every bit of energy I have in the classroom when I walk out the door. You don't want to be talking too much, but when you do talk, it's got to be in an engaging way to get kids to, to want to keep listening to you. 
And also I've found that when the kids like you, they're willing to do more for you. Like it's less effort on you to get them to do the work when they know you're a really cool and en engaging teacher. So I think it's really important to have some clear expectations and guidelines set from the beginning of your class. So in my classes, I always go over the same three rules at the beginning of each class. Rule number one for my classes is be nice, which is pretty general, but then I ask them, how do you be nice? And one way is to listen when the teacher is talking or when other students are talking to the whole class. That's being nice. Rule number two, try your best. Don't be lazy. And kids understand that for the most part. And rule number three is speak only English. Now a lot of schools, from what I've heard, don't really enforce the no Vietnamese rule. So you can choose to enforce it in your class, which I highly recommend. Because kids speaking Vietnamese doesn't help them learn English. It doesn't help you, it's just more annoying because you don't know what they're saying. So it's important to have an only English rule and enforce it strictly for the first few weeks so they get used to the fact that you mean what you say. And that goes for any rule, like follow through with every rule with consequences. So normally I give two warnings, like if they don't follow rule number one by talking when someone else is talking, I'll put their name on the board with one strike, warning number one. Two strikes, warning number two. Three strikes, I have to move their seat, they move away from their friends, they stop talking focus better and rule number or er, strike number <laughs> rule break number four strike number four I write their name in the teacher folder which means that later the front desk will call their parents and tell them they weren't listening to the teacher which scares a lot of kids so that works classroom management is also crucial when you're actually teaching in your job. But that's something that you find your rhythm with, you find what works for you with time, with knowing what your students are like. With a demo class, it's still important to have strong classroom management, but you don't really know the kids. So one way to do that would be to do like a quick name game or some little icebreaker at the very beginning to let the students know that you're human, you care about them more than just numbers in a class, you care about them more than just that you care about them. <laughs> and once they know that you're there because you really want to be there, you want to help them succeed, then they're easier to manage. Students are willing to go out of their way to please you when they know that you care. Uh, leading the class and being in charge is just a combination of what Alex was saying. Being enthusiastic, having passion in your voice, speaking clearly and slowly. I think when you get passionate, you sometimes tend to speak a little faster, but you've got to make it a point to slow down, enunciate, and make sure they're understanding what you're saying. And when it comes to that, um, whenever you give directions for a lesson, you need to have them repeat the directions to you so you know that they know what you want them to do. Going off what Alex said about being enthusiastic in the classroom, yeah, that's important to have the parents like you and the students like you and just to have an overall good time, but it's really important because a lot of kids are coming from public school all day, then going to English language centers, and they're very tired. So the teacher needs to be enthusiastic, passionate, getting kids up and moving around. Otherwise, they sometimes do fall asleep in class, which you don't want. So keep them engaged, keep them excited. It, your job depends on it. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Um, and also that goes for younger students too, you know. If they are younger, it's harder to keep their attention, so just bear that in mind. Then one last tip from me, and this is time management, and this was something I always struggled with with teaching, is fitting everything in, making sure you don't go over time. Some schools, when you do a demo class with them here in Vietnam, and other countries too, they want to see that you can keep your lesson to the allocated time and fit all the important parts in, and you don't want to spend 20 minutes on vocabulary and then like five minutes on conversation when it should actually be the other way around you know so just work on getting your timing well planned out and sticking to it and that way you can make sure that you uh, get all the important stuff covered and give the students enough time to talk and practice you can even set little timers on your watch or your phone to make sure that that goes off when it's time to move on to the next all right there you go all right going for swim
so I just had a gym workout and as you can see there's a big parking lot for motorbikes this is not all people in the gym there's all sorts of other fitness center things going on around here so that's why there's so many motorbikes more than normal I think there's a stadium here too or something something's going on but the cool thing is you can park here and then the gym's right over there you walk right in and they give you a towel so you can take a sauna and a shower after your workout and then leave it there so no wet towels in your bag I love that and uh, yeah this is fit 24 I ended up going with this gym it works out to be about 30 US dollars per month uh, but you do have to sign a longer term contract to get that price So I just got back to my apartment and the lighting outside is beautiful. Let me show you this. Oh man, look at that. I can't get enough of this view, it's so beautiful. Boom, look at that. So one thing to add to what we were talking about earlier is these tips are not only relevant for being a good teacher in the classroom, but they are important for actually getting a job. Now in Southeast Asia, I would say 95% of schools want to interview you in person and for you very often to do a demo class, almost all the time. So whether you're hired or not pretty much comes down to that demo class. And that's why we often talk about why an in-class course, a TEFL course that is over a month where you have a real instructor who's helping you, you have observed classes, you get feedback on your teaching, is so good for new teachers and experienced teachers. We've had some experienced teachers come and do a course with us just as a refresher because it's so important to be able to step into a classroom and deliver a good lesson. So good luck with applying these tips. I hope you nail your interviews and demo classes with schools and land a great job. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, any ideas for future videos. If this is the first video you're watching, make sure to subscribe for more videos about life and teaching English out here in Asia. And I'll speak to you in a new video very soon. Peace.